No, I got it. This is Suspenders Unbuttoned Podcast. I'm Sarah. And I'm Julie. Join us for unbuttoned and unedited conversations. This is Suspenders Unbuttoned. <laughs> I see that every time. Hi, welcome to Suspenders Unbuttoned Podcast. I am Sarah. <laughs> and I'm Julie, and we're excited to welcome the Lady Rose Steinman to the podcast today. Welcome. Thank you. Thanks for having me. I'm excited to be here. Yeah, we're so happy to have you, and I'm so happy to be talking about Hometown Remedy, your uh, latest rom com. So thanks for being here. Yeah, of course. I'm I'm glad I've I've seen your podcast many times, you know, in the world. So it's nice to show up on it. <laughs> <laughs> We'd love having you as a guest. Uh, this is pretty fun. Um, so uh, Hometown Remedy is uh, a new movie, and it's actually already available on. Yes, so that's right. It just came out. Uh, Valentine's Day, but it's it's still getting its big push. So uh, people are going to find it more places. And um, right now it is on Tubi. Um, pretty soon it'll be on Super Channel in Canada. And then it's it's rolling out to Freebie and, and Roku pretty soon too. Um, so pretty soon everybody will be able to access it. Also Spanish speaking countries. But, um, you know, it's a lot of fun. It's a really sweet movie with a good team and um, I loved being a part of it and um, filmed in my home state. So I made every buddy I've ever known in my life come like be extras and hang out with me and stuff, um, which was so fun. So I love talking about it. Wait, so you got people you know to that come be the extras? That's oh yeah, so one of my fun. best friends from high school, I got her a line, but she got oh. cut. And I was like, this, oh, this no. is tough, Jess. It's tough. Oh, I <laughs> it was love great. that. It was, it was too long. But it was it was great anyway. Actually, I need to like see if I can hunt down that footage for her. <laughs> so, yeah, but uh, yeah, I mean my friends, they I it was I've shot in Kentucky before. Uh, the last time was 2017. Um, but that was several hours from where I'm from. And mm -hmm. this was only like an hour to an hour and a half. So I mean the whole time I was there, I had this cute little house. I just had people staying with me or coming for the day. Like I, I had a schedule and I was like, oh, I'm actually booked then. How about you come the day after? So, you know, I've lived in Los Angeles for like 16 years. So that was so fun. Fun to have everybody be able to come. Um, yeah. So tell us, how did, how did it start? Like, how did this movie come together and, and end up being filmed right in Kentucky? Yeah. So, um, you know, it was actually very serendipitous because uh, the tax incentive that took me to Kentucky in 2017 actually didn't stick around. And uh, I had heard that they had recently reintroduced it and it was much stronger. And so I had mentioned to my manager, like, you know, if, if something comes up that's there, like, let me know that because I really mm -hmm. want to be a part of you know, one, it's fun to go back, obviously, but I want to be a part of like helping it grow and putting a voice to that. And so um, when this offer came through, it felt very uh, perfect because I was like, oh, I just started asking for this and here it is, you know. Right. And, um, you know, it, it was a newer, younger team of filmmakers and um, really talented bunch. So uh, I was excited to hopefully get to know them now because their work is just mm. so great. And, um, you know, the, the writer and, and producers who have been in the industry for a while, but not in this particular genre, there was just so much heart and like good juju on this set, you know, which is not always the case. And you can always work fine where it's just professional, but it, when right. it becomes like summer camp, it's always just an extra treat. I love you what I hear that a lot about <laughs> like, like, like filming these uh, movie of the weeks where sometimes mm -hmm. that just feels like summer camp and you just yeah. really get to know everybody and it's like a bonding. Yeah. And they're so like, you know, I think I don't think any of them, except if there's like uh, international stuff, is ever over five weeks. You know, right. most of them are three, and that's working a lot. <laughs> so, um, I mean, you're with these people. Everybody's on their best behavior week one. You know, by week two, you start to see people kind of like uh, <laughs> maybe not have a great day or lose their temper or this or that. And then by right. week 
three, you're all like, wow, we've been through some things. And then you're like, oh yeah. And then there's going to be a movie where we can watch it. You know, so <laughs> you just go into that. It's so fun that you forget like, oh, that's right. There will be a movie that we can all <laughs> Love that. Can you tell us a little bit about Hometown Remedy, about the movie? Yeah. What's it about? Sure. So Hometown Remedy is about um, Dr. Adele Clark, who I play. And she is from this cute town. And it's funny because uh, it's for sales, Kentucky, and that's a real town. And it's not Versailles. It's kind of like Galadriel and Galadriel. Right? <laughs> um, and so it's funny because I was so excited when I got there and they were so impressed because I was like, I know how you're supposed to say it because I'm from here. <laughs> you know, um, so that was a lot of fun. But anyway, uh, I find out that my dad has been elected mayor. and I'm a very busy surgeon at um you know, uh, a city a hospital and all of the chaos that goes on with that. And I agree to come home and help with this party and things like that. And then uh, when I get home, I don't really run into the doctor with my car, but it looks like I did. And as the only doctor in town, I have to step in and get acquainted with small town medicine and all that goes with it. And, you know, maybe some sparks fly with that doctor that lives, by the way, through <laughs> that deal. Right. Um, and all the, you know, all the things that go along with it. So, um, you know, it was really sweet. And I felt like even though I'm an actor and not I only play a doctor on TV, um, <laughs> I could really relate to that because it's really in this cute town. It really highlights the town and the businesses right. and even like, you know, some of the local people are playing themselves in some parts. And I've been here long enough to just have like a whole new appreciation for that place. And so it felt more personal than these stories right. sometimes. Well, plus yeah. you had uh, lots of extras that you knew. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> sort of like, you know, when like your parents come to your like dance recital or something yeah. and you're like, me. That was sort of like me, like all these people that, you know. <laughs> <I'm> like, <laughs> and then, uh, I had a, I have a lot of friends that are nurses don't know why lots of nurses in northern Kentucky area apparently but uh one of my friends who came down who was an extra there's also a scene where I'm taking like blood pressure and stuff like that and so she just came in and demonstrated first I was like well look at this it's a good thing we had her she's gonna make me look good and she'll be an extra so. yeah good. And, the, and just looking the look in the ear looked okay too so yeah exactly I learned from the best you know and when I can't I try to YouTube it the best I can <laughs> right right um uh, so tell me is, you know, clearly the big city girl is coming to the small town and she hit the doctor. Is this doctor by chance, a good looking man? Of course he is. I mean, that's the thing that a lot of people comment to. They're like, that guy doesn't look like a small town doctor, but you know, oh. they're very judgmental. there's room for there is judgmental. although i'm like medicine. in a big city hospital <laughs> i know i was like i bet there's some good looking there's probably a calendar somewhere of all the good looking like small town doctors you know? <laughs> um but yeah that's actually part of the fun storyline is like all the women in the town uh of yeah. all ages just always bring him pies and you know uh maybe exaggerate their symptoms a little bit to get his attention. So <laughs> yeah, that was really cute. <laughs> all the, all the cakes and pies. Um, right. Do you have a favorite scene that you filmed that you can tell us about? Oh man, that's so hard because some of the like coolest scenes are actually some of the um, most difficult to yeah. film. So they felt more like, okay, get it right. You know, but uh, one moment in particular comes to mind, and there's a scene where I'm talking to uh, my parents in my kitchen, and I'm, like, sparring with them, like, I don't like him, I'm moving back to the city, you know, all that good stuff, and I just run out, and then they're pushing me about the uh, doctor, and then I um, poke my head out, and I just say, like, you know, um, by the way, he's coming to dinner tonight. I don't know what it was on that day, but every time I pop my head around, everybody just lost it. And it took <laughs> us like 10 minutes to the point where I would be like, get it together, people, <laughs> sticking my head out. And then I just turn around before it even started. Not just the actors, like the whole crew. And, you know, sometimes when that happens, you're even like, I know we got to get it. But for some reason, we just can't keep it together. And that was one where I was just like, 
everybody just wanted to go through and watch all the outtakes of that of everybody because it was just it was just a fun moment you know and those are the ones that you don't get to see on camera but that I remember like most strongly because right. there are the moments where that was definitely like a week three moment where we're all family <laughs> That's when like the slap happies come out. Right. <laughs> right. The slap <laughs> happies. I feel like I feel like every one of these movies we hear about, there's gotta be one, you know, like slap happy time. Like you're just like, we no one can get this together and we're yeah. all laughing. Yeah. Right. And you know, depending on the job, you hope it's been like long enough that everybody can see how good you are at your job. <laughs> and like <laughs> there's not the one person that's really upset about it. Like you know like okay let's we can laugh about this but we better get it together quick because time is money people because <laughs> you know? i have been in that situation where i'm with another actor and they can't get it together and i can feel that everybody's like okay and i'm just like yeah. come on you know? <laughs> get it together so that be i feel like that's got to be later because you got to all be tired and then um all been working together way too many hours mm -hmm. before you get to that slap happy scenes right yeah and you know it's like everything's out of order so you're changing wardrobe right. and you're trying to figure out what day it is and you're running around and you know i think then you let that down like movies like this we don't tend to have a huge crew mm -hmm. so by this point everybody knows everybody mm -hmm. you know and in this movie was particularly unusual for me because i think it's the first time no, I know it's the first time where I've been in every single scene in a movie. Yeah. Um, because normally there's just a scene where you're not, you know, even right. if you are the lead. And uh, the writer, David Stever, it was so funny because he didn't even realize that. I was like, do you know you put me in every single scene? He's like, <laughs> oh my <laughs> gosh, this next movie, I won't do that. And I was like, but on the other hand, like, you know, you see the actors when we do this, but we get FOMO because the crew's together the whole time. And so we miss inside jokes and, right. you know, there's stuff that goes on that we hear about from other people. Like, they're actually, like, the main characters of the set, you know? Right. So this time I was like, yeah, I'm just, like, one of the crew. Like, I just felt like I got I'm here for every scene. Part of all the cool kids. The whole yeah, time. you know, I didn't even realize that until you just said it. But we didn't get, like, a scene with, uh, you know, Dr. Matthews by himself. Nope. And the only time I wasn't in anything is if it was just the other side of a phone call that I was on. <laughs> right. <laughs> that you were already on. Right. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Gosh, I, that, wow. that's that's super fun. Um, ha, had you worked with anybody that was on this movie before? Uh, no, the casting director. That was okay. how uh, Kathy Campbell. That's how I was connected to the project. Uh, she recommended me to the producers because I hadn't worked with them before, and they were familiar with some of my work, and you know, thought I was right for it. Um, you know what? Now I remember because I was like, there was, there was going to be a DP or, you know, the videographer yeah. that I had worked with before on it, which initially, because I was like, I don't know any of these people. <laughs> and then he had to do like another project at the last minute. And I was like, oh, I hope it works out okay. Because <laughs> you never know what you're going to walk into. But I told them so many times, I'm like, I'm so glad it ended up being you guys. <laughs> and so they're all definitely, definitely people that I would work with again. And in fact, I have recommended so many people from this crew to other mm -hmm. productions because um, especially on the filmmaking side, they're so young, but so talented. And I was so impressed with what they were able to do with, um, you know, limited time, limited budget. And like, I think we're going to see a lot from some of those filmmakers in the future because I was just like, I've worked with some people that have been in this business 35, 40 years. And like, you bring this, spark in this voice to it right off the bat that you know i'm gonna say i'm gonna be calling like hey remember me right. now that you're working with spielberg <laughs> <laughs> remember that time in kentucky that's right remember <laughs> summer camp gosh that was fun <laughs> I love that. Um, so one other thing that I thought was neat about this was that Brittany Goodwin was the director, but she also played uh, the, your Sarah Sarah in the movie. Is that mm -hmm. it? So, uh, I thought that was funny. You don't always see that crossover. Sometimes we get that a little bit, but not usually the director yeah. as they're directing. So how is like how did that happen, and and how was that having you know your director yeah. also be a scene partner? 
Yeah. So um, it was great. Honestly, no, I don't, I don't see that often. I have a, there's a director that I work with quite a bit in a different genre who always pops into his movies, but it's more just like a cameo kind of yeah. fun, right. you know? And um, Brittany actually does this, I think on most films uh, where she directs it. And I think the nice thing is she casts herself well. <laughs> so I feel like it's unusual because it's a rare set of skills to have right. that right look and vibe for what she does and be a good director and know where it fits and where it doesn't. And I have to say, because, um, you know, I, I do a lot of other things besides acting. Directing isn't one of them, although I am an acting teacher. So it's kind of like mm -hmm. kind of direct for theater, you know, right. but um, I do a lot of producing and I do a lot of writing. And I was just really fascinated with watching someone who I imagine is around my age or how old she is, but I feel like we're around the same age. And uh, watch her wear those hats with such like authority and confidence again, and, and for in the field of directing, very young, right? Mm -hmm. um, where I was just really inspired by her, and we had a lot of conversations, you know, about me being like, I'm not, and she's like, you could do it. I'm like, oh, I don't know. Um, but I felt like, in many ways, it was. Uh, I'm a very ambitious person and I have my hands in a lot of pots and I'm always creating. I'm not patient enough to wait around for anybody to come give me a job. I'm always doing, and it was nice to meet someone else who I was like, wow, you're really like that. And you're really creating opportunities and you're not afraid to put yourself out there when you think you're right for something to say, like, I think I should do this. Like, you know, I mean, we need more women doing that. And, um, I think I drew a lot of inspiration from that. Like I'll definitely channel some Brittany in the future. And I thought she was adorable in that. And, and also we had an amazing first AD Mikey that she brought with her and he would direct uh, when she was in the scene and they had such a great communication and he had to leave us early to go back to college. Like that's how young oh, we were. And I, I love that. This is one of the best first ADs I have ever worked with. He was such a professional. I mean, I was just like, I kept telling him he was the Doogie Hauser of of ADing. And of yeah. course he's like, who's Doogie Hauser? <laughs> You're like, no. Yeah, he was like, I remember he was like, I looked it up. And I was like, I, I like, looked it up. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it was cool. It was great. I mean, Brittany brought a lot of the filmmakers with her, although I will say, um, you know, it's only thanks to our producers that she was able to do that, that they trusted her enough uh, to, to bring these other people that she just vouched for. Mm -hmm. um, but I really admired, uh, they brought everybody together that was very positive and optimistic and good at their jobs. Mm -hmm. And they really brought together people that were just really, um, they trusted each person to do their job because on, on these sets, I've been there where it's been very micromanaged or things are falling. And it was just like, everybody's opinion was respected in their own stuff. And it was just, it was just a really nice environment. You know, I'm always like, would I do it again? Will I, when they ask the next time or whatever, and this was definitely one where I'd show back up for these people. Yes. So oh, I think that team environment really just shines when mm -hmm. everyone is allowed to also do their job and then you lift each other up in their job. It's like, it makes the whole thing better. Right. Yeah, absolutely. And it makes so much of a difference when you're filming in these small towns because they feel that, you know, um, they're excited to have a film there, but a lot of productions aren't necessarily super respectful or super grateful that people are letting them use their town, use their stores, use their places. And there was so much, courtesy and respect on the production side the people were just like please come film here please whatever and would probably i bet offer to be a part of it again in the future which is not actually that common of a thing on films like that unfortunately and so it was just a true reflection of just like you know the the energy of the people involved which was really great to be a part of you know it was fun and I made a lot of good friends. <laughs> and I think we made a good movie, which ultimately is what the people are going to see, right? But, yeah, right. but I think that helps it make a good movie. Exactly. Right. Right. Uh, I, I mean, you could tell you were having fun. I mean, after we've watched so many movies mm -hmm. and had so many podcasts, so you could tell the cast um, enjoyed each other. You know, the, the actors that played your parents, mm -hmm. they were great and you were all great together. Um, I remember thinking, oh, wow, they casted that really well. Like, I felt yeah. like you almost looked like each other. Yeah, right? Yeah. It was great, you know. And, again, there's always a little bit of anxiety when you don't know 
who you're going to go work with. Mm -hmm. Um, because a lot of times after doing this for a while, there's, there's an overlap wherever you work, you know? And so I was very nervous. Like I have no idea who else is going to be in this, what they're going to be doing. And just at every turn, including the casting, I was like, whew, okay, I'm in good hands. Um, you know, because acting is not a one person thing and Mm -hmm. in order for it to be successful, you can only do so much and you have to really trust the people that you're with. And sometimes on these shorter shoots, like you got to jump right in. So I was really happy with that. And yeah, I think the people that played my parents, um, that played, um, I'm blanking on the character's name, but the very stern aunt of Dr. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. The receptionist also at the, um, uh, at the, the office. Yeah. She was, yeah. she was great. I mm-hmm. love her. I know. It was just like, wow, they're good at finding people. You know yeah. what I mean? And then I, I hope to work with all those people again. And, you know, I, I, since then I've tried to get a lot more involved with the film community in Kentucky and, mm. you know, I've made good friends with some people in the film commission there. And, uh, it's a very like hungry, excited group. And, you know, most of the other actors were local to a certain degree. So like, you know, right. I'm definitely keeping track because I hope I'm in a position to be able to hire these people one day. I love that. Were yeah. you a producer on this film too? I was, yes. Yeah. So how do you balance being a producer and a lead in a film? You know, it's interesting. Um, I will say that in certain times they're very nice and they let me be a producer. And other times they like really need me and I'm doing a lot of lifting. Mm-hmm. And this was uh will be nice. You have and I have a lot of experience in this genre. Mm-hmm. Um, and so there was a lot of room for me to share my experiences in this, which was excellent, but they didn't put too much on me, which was good because I was in every scene, but they were always very open and respectful of my experience in this and what I do bring to the table. And, um, again, I think that's reflective on how they treated everybody on the crew. So that was great. I was always able to share. It was fine. If I was like, I don't know if this is a great idea. Everybody was always very open you know, to that. Um, but when I have been a producer where I've been involved a lot more, it can get challenging, especially if you're trying to like, you know, if maybe there's a disagreement between a cast member and somebody on the production side and and being a cast member, if you're a producer, a lot of times that makes you kind of a liaison, Mm -hmm. you know, between the two. And, and so it can get tricky. Mm -hmm. Um, and it's definitely not something I would have felt comfortable doing in the first decade that I was acting. Um, but now it feels like something that, you know, it's like, I have this setting, it's easy for me to jump in and out of it more. And in fact, I would love to do more of it because it's so fun. And everybody's like, well, what are producers doing? That's the beauty of it is anything that makes the movie happen. So different producers have different roles. Mm -hmm. And so it's great when it's the things that you're good at and you love that they let you be a part of. Like, I love being a part of casting. I love being a part of um, revising scripts, which is something I also do professionally. So mm. it's great when I'm like, I'm going to say the words. You mind if I just yeah. like, you know, um, and, and when you get to really see what happens before the cameras start rolling, like it is just so fun, you know. After a while, you want to be a part of making the stories, not just being hired to tell other people's stories. Right. I, I could see that, yeah, mm-hmm. really easily. You you have the, all the skill sets. Mm-hmm. And, and you've been on sets that don't work and sets that do. Yep. And some big budget ones that don't do well and little budget ones that do great. And so you really start being like being able to see what you would, you know, it starts with the conversation. My husband and I act a lot together. Right. Um, and, you know, I remember the first time on a set we started being like, Okay, so when we do our movies, we would do X, Y, and Z. We definitely have two day weekends. We do this, we do that, you know. And so, um, we're collecting it all, and remembering, right. it all. and and we're getting to use it in some capacity. But ultimately, the goal would be for us to be executive producing, uh, especially in the genre, because we just yeah. love it. We know it. People yeah. love it. You know, um, it's a fun. Not going it's anywhere. Fun. It's not going anywhere. It's growing. Right. Like right. you know, being an actor and a teacher a lot of the industry has gotten smaller and and more insular, but this Mm -hmm. genre is just exploding, which is really exciting to see. And I encourage a lot of my students who want to be filmmakers to say like, look into this genre, even if you never have before, because it's fun. Um, It's, and it's open to buying a lot. Like people are making a lot of this stuff. So there's a lot of room. And 
I feel like in the last five years, especially, it's become much more open to different voices uh, mm-hmm. than before, a little less of the traditional storylines. Right. And so, you know, I have students that are like, oh, I don't I don't know if like, you know, Up or Hallmark or whatever, if they'd want somebody like me. And I'm like, now is a great time. They right. need you. And I just think that's cool. Absolutely. Uh, so you talked about your husband's also uh, an actor. And mm-hmm. there's some things. There is a comment that says uh, from Sharon, she says, <laughs> she loved you and your husband, Kevin Joy, and watch their um, their movies uh, almost every day. Uh uh, certainly have seen you have an Amish theme. <laughs> <laughs> I have done three Amish movies and no. would gladly do more. Um, somehow, I think I really got a monopoly on that, um, which I'm not mad about. I am an armchair Amish expert now for sure. But I love that she says your home husband, he is a monk. <laughs> Uh huh. Super cute. I love that. Hi, Sharon. Uh huh. Yeah. Uh. No. Right. Like, so you're both in the industry, so I I could totally see you. We have had uh, other couples on who are uh, executive producers, uh, directors, the other production people, and so uh, I, I can totally see that happening for you guys. Yeah. I mean, you know, that's ultimately the goal, and I think after, um, again, no matter how well the business goes for you. At some point, you're like, well, I want to tell the stories or, right. you know, you'll hear one where you're like, that's such a good idea. And then it doesn't get made. And then when you get more experience, and you're like, maybe I could help get it made and I could be a part of it. And um, it just seems like a natural extension. You know, mm-hmm. I used to think of it as like a fallback, like, oh, you'll do that if things don't work out or whatever. And now I'm like, it all scratches that same itch of like creating a thing and putting it out there and playing pretend and imagination and, Mm. you know, bringing forward voices that people relate to. Like, I think that's, I think it's more important than just, you know, entertainment. I think it really is important for people to see themselves on the screen in stories. And, you know, there are still people who aren't really getting their voices out there as much. And I think it'd be cool if I could be a part of like trying to elevate that a little bit, you know? Right. Um, I, I love it. and, I, and it feels like producing and directing all those things. It's like a little more global view of the things. And if you're in it, you maybe have a global view. And so it's a way to express that. Right. Yeah, absolutely. You know, um, and you get you get a bit of a, a say in things. Right. And, um, you know, the people when they put together a great crew like Brittany has with this movie, they can just leave and go to every movie together. Right. But they can't use the same actors in every movie. And we've been right. close to almost like in some with some production companies where maybe it's like every other, you right. know. But um, you they have to change out the actors where it's like if they have a great costume designer, she can be in every single movie. Right. People don't really get that about actors. So there are times where we're like, oh, Kevin and I will be looking at Instagram. We'll be like, oh, look, they're all, they're all on set together. You're right. <laughs> and you're not there. <laughs> and we're like. Oh, okay. No, I have FOMO. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So tell us, you've been, you know, acting and in this industry for quite a while. So why don't you tell everybody that's watching how how you got into it? If they sure. don't know already. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I um, always loved acting when I was a kid. And when I was even in kindergarten, I was like, I'm going to grow up and be an actress. And then... You know, uh, in high school, I got a little deterred and just, I think the reality of the world, you know, me being like, this is crazy. Like nobody makes a living at it. Um, And so I tried to find something else that made me happy. And I spent a little bit of time in college trying stuff. And eventually uh, I really did enjoy journalism and I was studying like broadcast journalism Mm -hmm. and you know, saw, saw myself did my internships at like the local CBS affiliate and saw myself in that world, but just sort of accidentally the film department at my college started pulling from the on-camera department rather than the theater department for some of these like short film festivals and things. And I got in one of those and all of a sudden I was like, oh, oh, it's so fun. And um, so kind of at the end of college, I sort of changed direction really quickly and I hadn't expressed my desire to do that to a lot of to a lot of people because I was sort of embarrassed about, you know, I'm just going to go to LA and try and be an actress, you know, (laughs) Um, where we're right before that I was going to go to grad school. 
Uh, but I, you know, I had, I always give a shout out to my favorite professor in college, Dr. Proctor. We're still in touch. And I went into his office tearfully one day and was like, I don't know. Like he was going to write me my recommendation for grad school. And I'm like, I just, I feel like I kind of want to move to LA and be an actor. And I remember him being like, I didn't know you acted, but I have never seen you not do anything that you wanted to do. Mm. And he's like, and college is there, you know? Mm -hmm. So I had my GRE scores and I was like, all right, those graduate or those expire in four years. And I had enough saved up to spend like nine months in LA, which for the record, you need a lot more than that to figure (laughs) out if it's going to work out. Uh, So don't think if you come to LA for nine months and you're not making a living, there's something wrong. That was not a grounded decision. Um, And I got really lucky and I started working and that nine months has turned into 16 years and I started a family here and, you know, um, honestly, I'm just so grateful, but that's one of the reasons why I teach and coach is because I I spent many years learning things the hard way and it's very Mm -hmm. satisfying to allow some people to uh, skip some of those roadblocks and um, you know it's not an industry where you just go to school and you get all the information there are no books that are updated with what we're doing and that can be really frustrating it was for me before I moved and with this industry becoming more global you know you can self-tape now and things are filming so many more places it opens it up to so many more people um so I think I probably would have started earlier if I were younger you know but um ultimately I always worked my tail off and um I take criticism really well if it needs to be heard I'm not going to wait a month to incorporate I'm going to start working on it right away and then luck met that which is always a factor in this business And, and you know people who knew more were kind to me and tried to help me skip some steps and um we should all be passing that down because mm-hmm. you know people are like oh it's so nice that you do that i'm like i also owe it because some people helped me and um otherwise you know this business could just be as cold and distant as some people think it is but for the most part i have found it to be super supportive and mm-hmm. weird and accepting and just like a bunch of big kids who just ran away to the circus you know love that i love that <laughs> when did you know like when were you like wait, I'm actually making a living. I'm actually paying the bills. Um, probably the first time I got health insurance. Because uh, mm-hmm. I was still on my mom's health insurance oh, at that point. Right. And I got a letter from SAG. And I was just like, what? Yeah. And it came along with a letter saying I had like received my first pension credit. And I was like, what? That sounds so grown up, you know? <laughs> um, and there were ups and downs. You know, there were ups For and downs. Sure. And, and even past the point where I was really having ups and downs, there were times that were hard that I hadn't experienced since early in my career, like COVID, mm-hmm. um, yeah. you know, nobody was working, the strike last year, yeah. uh, nobody was working. Um, and so I'm very grateful that, uh, well, one, we live very responsibly. My husband is really good at finances and keeps me reined in a lot on, no, we should just make food at home, that kind of stuff. So. <laughs> That's good. But also um, we do lots of things and that gives us a safety net. It also takes the pressure off of feeling like, oh, I have to take this job or do that. Mm -hmm. Um, Where it's like, if I don't need that next acting job, I'm only going to come to it with like joy or I'm never going to come to it dragging my feet because I'm going to be there because I really want to be there. Mm -hmm. You know, I love that. Love that. Thanks. So do you have uh, a dream role or like a dream project? Um. That's a good question. It changes all the time. I realized that uh, recently when somebody was like, what was your dream when you moved out here? And I was like, it was to be in a movie. Yeah. So (laughs) (laughs) I was like, that's really where it lay. Um, So I feel like I'm constantly reinventing that. And I would say, so my current dream, but I won't call it a dream because it's a plan. It's a plan is um, I have two romance novels out um, that were adaptations of scripts that I had been shopping around. And then when COVID hit, um, I got a publishing deal and published them. And, you know, I think they're great. And I am planning to get those made. And it doesn't matter to me so much if I'm in it or just a producer on it, but I think it'd be so cool to see something to me, that would be the ultimate in creation. Mm-hmm. And I'm sure it's going to happen. Like, 
it's gotten so close a couple of times, but that'll be a day where I'll be like, okay, time to write down a new goal and be specific this time. Don't just say a movie. <laughs> yeah, well, clearly when you put something out there, it ends up happening. So <laughs> keep I mean, I'm, I'm a little bit of a pit bull with that. You know, <laughs> I mean, I am, when I get laser focused on something I do, the problem is, is I have a lot of passions and I'm proud to say a lot of gifts that I feel like I have nurtured. Uh, so sometimes I have to like really set a couple things aside so that I can make progress on some other things. But, you know, for every minute that acting gets slow, there's something I want to be writing yeah. for every uh, time that my writing, I'm just waiting to see what people want to do. There's a class that I want to be teaching mm -hmm. uh, or creating or whatever. So I think I'm just so lucky that I am now at a place where my whole professional life is stuff that I would do even if I didn't get paid for it. I need to get paid for it because otherwise I'd have to do something. <laughs> but um, I really just love what I do, you know, um, and have created a great, you know, LA attracts the top of the barrel and the bottom of the barrel. Mm -hmm. Like everybody who's kind of content with where they are stays where they live, you know? Right. So yeah. you get that. But because of that, it's like, I've just met the most fascinating people here. And now some of them are like godparents to my children. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it's just a really beautiful thing to be a part of. And I think, um, a lot of people don't get to see that side of the industry. It's the actual, like everyday working you know, people who are just working, showing up and being mm -hmm. in the stuff, not necessarily walking the red carpets at the Oscars. Um, but it is like a very valid career option for people that I think that it's, it's hard to get to see it. You know, and I'm just glad that I get to be a part of it. And my husband, my kids, poor kids, they got two parents for actors. Like, <laughs> we are dramatic over here, you know. Um, <laughs> I'm, I'm just like waiting to hear that you have the one kid who is like not dramatic at all and just really <laughs> wants not. Oh, absolutely. Atticus <laughs> is going into finance and he now he thinks it's kind of cool because now he's at an age, he's in middle school. Some of his friends have seen us and stuff. And he yeah. Thinks that's cool. Um, right. We can you know, to the before I try to get him to watch my stuff and he'd be like, cool. Like yeah. very good for the ego, very good for the ego. But yeah, he's going into finance, has never been interested in it. They've both been in, uh, actually my husband and I had a, a Hallmark movie that they had little cameos in, which worked oh. out well because we didn't have childcare either. So, <laughs> um, but but the young one, you know, he's, he's in first grade. That's a wild card. He is so dramatic. And the, you, I mean, as parents, we're like, oh, I hope you find something that like you have a little more control over, but also you'd be in the best hands possible, right? Mm -hmm. If it was here, but um, he doesn't like being told what to do. So he likes to create and perform and get your mm -hmm. eyes on him. But I, I keep telling him, I'm like, yeah, like you don't just do whatever you want. <laughs> like you got to do what the director tells you and what the word's saying. He's like, oh, yeah. no. And I'm like, cool. Let's call this a hobby. <laughs> <laughs> um, I feel like I can relate to you in terms of the ages. I've got a middle schooler and a first ish. Well, he's kindergarten, but oh yeah, yeah. Age yeah. Range there, yeah. My kids are six years and one week apart. So wow, yeah. But we were very young when Atticus was born. Yep. Uh, we needed, we needed. You that needed screen. the years, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, <laughs> we have one more in between, yeah. but yeah. yeah. Yeah, I mean, you know, it's kind of a bit of a bohemian lifestyle and so inconsistent. And so um, it's great when you can bring kids into that. I love that they can see us doing it, but it takes a little bit of different, especially when you're an on-camera actress, right? right? You can't really hide that you're having a baby. Right. So um, it's a little different than I think a lot of people in other professions. Like, obviously, women are always dealing with that, right. um, especially being professionals and trying right. to figure out how to balance all of these things. Um, but in acting, uh, you can't work quite as long through pregnancy, you know, <laughs> well, you still do voiceover, but even your voice changes, you know? Right. Interesting though. We've actually seen a few, uh, um, we talked with a director who had an actress who was seven months pregnant while they filmed, uh, there was a lot of, a lot of ankles and a lot of yeah, you know, put, yeah. Yeah, put yeah. I mean, if that had come along, I would have said yes, but I feel like, you know, just no one called at just the right time. So I had a nice break. Fortunately, during my last child, I, 
I had a couple commercials airing. So it was like nice. I was working, but, um, you know, having a kid so young, it's like, as soon as he was born, I had to get back as soon as I could right. and really yeah. prove myself and not waste any time. And so it was nice that our lives had stabilized so that by the second one, I got to kind of stay off as long as I wanted and mm -hmm. be particular about how I would come back. And, right. um, you know, I mean, I'm grateful for that. I know yeah. not everybody knows that. Right, right. That is that is uh, is nice, and it's nice to be in that position to be able to. Yeah, do very like, lucky. You know? With the first one, not so much. You needed to get working again, and and. Ooh, I admire those kids back then. I say that all the time. So me and my husband, like, I was like, wow, they were confident. Like, <laughs> oh, oh, we always say confidently <laughs> stupid. Like you're like, yeah. you just don't know any better, so you just go with it. And people you know, ask me all the time, like, oh. I, you know, that are actors, especially if they're younger, like, I want what you have. I love what you guys have done. And, and they're like, how do you do it? And I'm like, oh, I don't know. We, didn't know. <laughs> we did it. But things were probably more precarious than we knew. <laughs> <laughs> Which was good. And we're like, like, look, we have a lot of support. So like right. that helps, you know, we had support from our friends. My husband's family lives here, even though my mom lives far away. She's always been very involved. And especially when Atticus was little, none of our friends were having babies, especially not in L.A., right? He was like the token baby of the group. So I'd have friends that had been on set in Vancouver. They'd be like, hey, I'm back in town. Can I babysit? And they'd only like, yeah. Yeah. In, like Starbucks, yeah. which was exactly what we needed at the time. So it definitely was not easy. But now looking back, it has that nice glow of nostalgia, you know? <laughs> Fun, fun. Hey, can we circle back to you have two books? Where can we yes. get those books? Yes, I would love to circle back to my books. Yeah, let's circle back yes. to that. Anywhere. Um, I write, I do write under a pen name, but it's an open pen name. And I only did that because um it's a it's very specific to this genre. Mm -hmm. And I have been working, I have a book deal for an acting book and other stuff. And I know that like if I like an author's book and I look them up and then they have stuff that's totally different. I'm kind of like confused. And you know, honestly, I was tooting my own horn. I was like, I plan to write so much more stuff. So I want when people pick up a Willa Frederick book, I want them to know that it's going to be like a warm hug and it's going to be complex and relationship based and all of this other stuff. So I call them my Willa Frederick books, which okay. my dad was a writer and his name was William Frederick. So it's an oh. homage to him. Oh, I like that. Yeah. And the first one is called Love Against the Autumn Sky. And Aww. it's a little bit more of a drama. Um, but I particularly love that story because it's just as focused on the relationship between the women in it as it is the romance. And in fact, you know, one of the networks at the time was like, if you change it so that there's not so much about them, we would be interested. And I just was like, no. <laughs> I'll write you something else, but no, uh, that's where this came from, you know? Um, and now I will say they are looking for more stories like that. So that's, yeah, nice. yes, it, we've seen one of the like, big networks wow. literally has a series. Yes. Like that, so, so. Um, so I'm holding on to that one. Um, and that one did really well. And then just this past Christmas, um, I had planted in Christmas come out and it's a little more rom com -y. Um, mm -hmm. it is about, uh, this, you know, during COVID, I got really like in the rabbit hole of these like houseplant influencers, <laughs> you know, like everybody was buying these like thousand dollar, you know, princess philodendrons. And I was just like, oh my gosh, this whole world is so wild. And it was bonkers. And I definitely bought it. So I used, I was like, I need to do something with all of this random knowledge. Yeah. You know? And I'm, I'm a gardener anyway, but that's the nice thing about writing books. You can be like, see, or like all this Amish stuff. I can be like, see, it paid off to be obsessed with the Amish. <laughs> Other people would just find that weird. I can use it. Um, and so this one, she's a, a houseplant influencer and she's trying really hard to get like the equivalent of an HGTV show, like their first yeah. episode plants and then she does something to publicly disgrace herself is getting kind of canceled and uh doesn't have much time to prove herself while at the same time um in her town there is this family-owned christmas tree farm that mm -hmm. has been there for centuries and is really struggling and they won't embrace technology and all of this stuff and of course being fronted by a very attractive young fellow who um and so uh they get thrown together. They have already had some not great communications with each other because she's this 
influencer indoors, very into that. And he's this no nonsense outside guy, but then they kind of realize that they're both going to need each other um, to understand the values that each brings in order to get what they're trying to get. And then you see what else happens in it. So it's a lot of fun. And I actually, uh, the first book I set in Utah, which is mm -hmm. a place that I just find to be so beautiful. And I really think that Utah is definitely a character in that book. Yeah. Um, and then in this one, my publisher is actually set in Twin Falls, Idaho. And I went there for a signing uh, as I was writing this and I immediately changed it to be set in Twin Falls and one of my editors who lived there for a long time so I could really get all those other things that I did because it is such a little little big town you know so I think both are just really fun and if you like Hallmark movies um, they're very much like a part of that genre basically I saw all these ones that were based on books and yeah. sometimes I would be like I don't know if I think that book's that great. And so when I had this script, I called the publisher and I was like, what if I wrote it? Like, would a publisher publish it if I kept the film rights? Because I don't want to give anybody the film rights. I already wrote the script, you know? Right. And she was like, well, I'll publish it. And I was like, oh, great. Problem solved. Let's go. So, um, so it was very cool. So you know? Do you already have your scripts from your novels? Like, have you written them out both ways? They start, they both started as scripts. So, okay, they both, and then you turn it into a novel. So, but between the first and the second, it's very hard to adapt a book or a script yeah. to a book because you need B and C storylines and, and you mm -hmm. go deeper. And so I learned so much from that, that when I was working on the, the Christmas script, I had a hunch they were going to want me to write another book. So I actually wrote the script. Usually a script is between 90 and 110 pages. I wrote it like 180 pages with like a B and a C storyline. And then I edited that down. But then when I went back to do the novel, as I thought I might, yeah. I used that as the outline. Right. And so it was much easier. It was a little less interesting because I had it all figured out, but right. it was a lot easier to get through quickly. Because note to authors, don't recommend making your first book season specific. Um, because a fall book needs to come out in the fall and a Christmas book needs to come out before Christmas. So it made those deadlines like yeah. <laughs> oh. very stressful. My husband was like, please, please just set one at a generic time. Right. And I, for his sake, you know, cause I'm on like, a Sunday, whenever. <laughs> but it's been great. I learned so much from that and I'm really proud of them. You know, um, I'm mm -hmm. really proud of those books. I, I'm a big reader. Come by it honestly with my name. Yeah. And I've been studying it my whole life. And I wanted to make sure that like I was proud of the stories that I was telling. And so I really Well, I will be looking that up today. Yeah. Ooh, after this, probably. Oh yeah. <laughs> they're like they're on Amazon. They're yeah. available all over the place. I'll grab it. Yep. Perfect. Yay. Oh, and the first one does have an audiobook if anybody likes those. And I oh, yeah. Sarah loves an audiobook. I do. I, do. Yeah. I am um busy at home so sometimes it's like lovely to have a story going on that I can oh like while you're doing I'm a hundred percent with you yeah. like you can forget that you're cleaning or putting away or exactly. whatever it is because you're like oh I want to just hear what happens next yep. week. Mm -hmm. I'm a big audible lover <laughs> same hey would you play a little game with us before we wrap up sure I'd love um, to. it's a favorites game um okay. so I'll start how about uh what is your favorite rom-com Besides yours. <laughs> Your favorite rom-com. Um, oh my gosh, that's so hard. How do I pick can, one? You can have more than one. You can give okay. it. Well, I mean, I love like when Harry met Sally. Oh, yeah. I love, um, you know, all the early 2000s ones, like Made in Manhattan and How to Lose a Guy in 10 Days mm -hmm. in Alabama. And, um, you know, I also love a lot of Hallmark movies. There was one I really liked that was like a um, country, what was it called? Something about country music. And I found it because it came out when we had a movie on Hallmark. And so they were public publicizing at the same time. And, uh, oh my gosh, that one was so good. Um, and, the, you know, and I also love all the Amish ones. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and, and all those Amish movies. <laughs> all the Amish movies. Even the not funny ones. Like, now if I see Amish, I'm like, Record. <laughs> yep, I'm gonna, gonna record that one. Um, right. Do you have a favorite TV show that you've ever watched, or something you're currently binging? Oh my gosh! Well, um, when I'm really crazed, I binge trashy reality shows like The Best of Them, all the Netflix Love at First Sight, or Married at First Sight, Love Is Blind. Yeah. Um, but you know, the strike also affected all of us, and like waiting for our shows to come back. So I'm really excited for. 
uh, House of the Dragon to come back. Mm. Really excited for Severance to come back. Um, and then I just uh, auditioned for um, the summer I turned pretty. And so whenever I audition for stuff, I'm always like, oh, I should try it. You know, know what I'm auditioning for. And literally 48 hours later, I had watched both seasons. Yeah. So <laughs> now I'm anxiously waiting for season three to come out of that. <laughs> I, I love that. Uh, I do want to say, I think your mom is in the chat. So she Hello. Oh, yes, it's Peggy. Hi, Peggy. I hope she was here before to hear how much you guys complimented her because she was fantastic. Yes, we, we did. Fantastic. We, we enjoyed, uh, we enjoyed. And it's also my mom's real name, Peggy. So we, we bought it. And that's Barrett, who played my dad, has a son named Atticus. It was just all. No like, way. The, see, see <laughs> so many of them. They're just that's everywhere. Crazy. <laughs> I, I I love that. Angie's in the chat too, saying I love the Amish movies. So oh, good. I love that. I've got Ooh. some more. I'm trying to get made. So perfect. <laughs> we'll be here for them. Nice. Um, okay. How about favorite food? Favorite food. Um, it kind of rotates between sushi and French fries. Those are absolutely the most perfect absolutely. answers. There's sure. not really a moment where I won't be ready for one of the two. <laughs> okay. Yeah, that, that is a good answer. That is a good answer. Um, music. Uh, do you have a favorite band or, um, or musician singer? Yeah. You know, I have pretty eclectic music tastes. Um, the only person who is current that I really listen to, I'm a, I'm a converted Swifty. Um, okay. We are all are. Yeah. So, you know, I, I, I've been dragging my feet over the years and stopped fighting it a while ago. Yeah. Um, I also love like Brandy Carlisle and Chris Stapleton oh, going yeah. to that concert. And, but um, my heart is really with music from before my time. Yeah. So um, actually I am so excited because just the other day I got tickets to see Joni Mitchell on my birthday. Oh, no way. And he's my like bucket. And I didn't think I'd ever have a chance. <sighs> But like the Eagles, Joni Mitchell, oh, yeah. Dylan, like late sixties to late seventies is just. I mean, I, I have it. old albums up on my wall here, so. Yes, yes, yes. Oh. I mean, yeah, we we try to get our sons to. We're like they keep us up on current music. Well, the yep. little ones we see like Minecraft, you know. But Atticus, it's funny to see the stuff that he like rediscovers and thinks right. he came upon it. Like he'll start singing something. And then I'll know it. And he's like, I'm like, I knew that before you were born. Exactly. You know? Don't bring the dark magic to me. I was there when it was made. I know. Which makes me feel very old when I can finally be like, I knew that 20 years ago. Yeah. And then I'm like, ah! Uh -huh. <laughs> But it's, uh, you know, it's just kind of funny. And especially now with everything being digital and not really being released on a CD or anything, it's like now then they like rediscover something, then that all goes through the list. And you're like, wait, you're listening to John Denver? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's my mom's favorite. It's so cool. But it's also overwhelming, right? Because like I want to discover new music, but I'm like, ah, there's so much. And Maybe I've just passed that point in my life where I'm like, you need to be gentle. It's just <laughs> let me hear it a couple times in the background and then I'll like come to it, you know. It's oh, oh but I do love like a lot of folk too. Like I have to like say like fleet boxes and iron and wine and all of them. So very eclectic. Yeah, yeah. But and both everyone in my family except for me, I took a year of it, but they are all piano players, you know. And oh, Attic has nice. actually been he's really good now and stuff like that. So uh, I discover rediscover a lot of classical music and stuff through that so i always say too i love the music that's playing in my home because it's either something i'm playing on a record yeah. or we're requesting from the lady whose name i won't say in case she starts talking or it's coming <laughs> from the piano you know i i love that though the out uh, music in the home that's very much our household did yeah. you do, did you do ever do musicals or anything uh acting I did. You know, I never really learned to sing. So the last musical that I was in where I sang was my freshman year of high school in Annie. And I was not Annie, but I was Tessie, the oh my goodness orphan. And um, that was really cool. Honestly, that's still something that I think I go back and like learn more mm. to sing because, you know, I'm not terrible, but... It's just not something I focused on, but I love musical theater. I am such a huge 
musical theater fan and um, maybe because I'm not as much a part of that world too, I feel like I can just get totally lost in it and I'm not thinking about like, why didn't I audition for this? Or, right. you know what I, I don't get the FOMO as much. I just right. love. You can just go enjoy it. So oh. what's, your, what, what's your favorite? Well, I mean, you know, you've got Annie, which was my first love and Hamilton because it's awesome. But I also really love um, a lot of the classics like, uh, Oklahoma and, and singing in the rain and my fair lady, you know, um, there aren't many I don't like. Oh, Les Mis. <sighs> Love Les Mis. Always. Yeah. Always. Uh, you know what? I have not thought about my fair lady in a long time and I should add that to my daughter's list because she's <gasps> very into musicals and I, yes. um, I did not put that on her list. That is oh, one, like classical musicals that Sarah's like, that is yeah. i know that's a fun part of parenthood where you're still at an age where you can like force them to watch things that you want to relive you know <laughs> i would say that's my favorite and then sometimes you'll be like wow this does not land the same as an adult yeah, yeah. that happens often <laughs> yes I'm like, yeah we watched camp nowhere with our kids recently, you know and they're getting like everybody to lie and give all their money for camp and make a fake camp and get and i was just like ah. don't do that and my kids like this is pretend, guys. And we're like, whoa, was all this here 20 years ago? <laughs> you know? It's so funny how you were like, when you were like watching it, you were like, it's totally fine. And now you're like, oh, no. Yeah, we were like, wow, that'd be so fun. And of course, that's what we remember. We're like, oh, remember how fun Camp Nowhere is? And then we watch it. <laughs> you're like, this is all questionable. Yeah, or like Free Willy, he's like spray painting the wall, like scene one. And my son was like, what's he doing? And I'm like, oh. And he's like, wait, that's the good guy. And I'm like, well, <laughs> he's going to get redemption he's somewhere. Yeah. Redeem himself. Don't do that ever. <laughs> yeah, well, but there was a point in time when we were all like, yeah. And then it's now it's like, oh, no. Exactly. Um, yeah. I see a question on there about um, voiceover from yes. Michael Turner. Um, Country at Heart. That's the movie I was trying to think of. Thank you. I love Sheila. Her. That was my favorite. Yeah, Thanks Sheila, I'm not surprised it's you. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, so it was out at the same time as Follow Your Heart. Dang, that's good. Um, so Sheila. for Michael Turner, I would love to do more video games and animation. Mm. So, okay, that sounds really fun. Actually, I'm just like. Yeah, I have, a, I have a, a video game I was a part of called Until Dawn that um, had, was like a sleeper hit. And it was so fun and so cool. And we're actually approaching, or did we just hit? I forget what year it came out. He probably knows. I'm like, did we just hit 10 years or it's approaching 10 years and they're re-releasing it for PS5 now. Oh. And, um, you know, I'm just waiting for people to call me and offer me some more. So if you know anyone, <laughs> let them know. Who's got a <laughs> video game they're making and they need some voice work. Oh my yeah. gosh. It was the only time I'd ever done that. And so that was like a kid in a candy store. Cause mm. I was like, so fun. So. It just um, seems so fun. I, I just it is so fun. Game. It is so fun. And you know, for uh, a while we had the world record the Guinness World Record for the longest video game script ever. Because it's very much wow. like choose your own adventure. It's like a bunch oh. of ice cream, sort of like a haunted house type survive the night. Oh, somebody says they're playing Until Dawn right now. Please don't kill me. Uh, <laughs> and which one are you in Until Dawn? I play Ashley. You're yeah. Ashley? For Ashley. Yeah. Um, they're also wow. adapting it for a movie, which I'm afraid I would be too old for now. But um, you know, still holding out hope that they find a spot for all of us who have aged out of our high school selves. <laughs> <laughs> we all age out of our high school selves. <laughs> yeah, I know. Either way, I'd be watching it. Like, you can't be a part of something like that for that long and not yeah, have a fan to go, you know. Are, are you actually, my older son started playing it, and he, he stopped because it scared him a little too much. Um, again, I wanted him to be a little bit more impressed than he was, but it's good, <laughs> good for the ego. Right. <laughs> Nothing like your kids to keep you in check. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I tell them that all the time. Uh, oh, did I know about the Until Dawn remaster before that happened? Yes, but only a little. Uh, Sony reached out to us because it had leaked and they were they did want us to be a part of the announcement. So they were letting us know what was going on and asking us not to share anything until the official announcement. Mm. Eliza Doolittle. Peggy, I could see you playing Eliza Doolittle in eighth grade. Oh <laughs> so jealous. I always wanted to play Edo Annie in Oklahoma. Um, that's the yeah. one. 
that you know what when I take those singing well you don't really have to sing great for her but I could see myself in karaoke sometime everybody being like what is this song I mean it's like, <laughs> in a moment I'm like, having my moment right now and I'm living out my dream when I forgot to <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, you know, I'll, everyone's got their thing where they're like, that would be so much fun. <laughs> I know, right? The one that like sometimes in your dreams, you're like, wow, I just happen to be here in this right now. And I'm really good at it. <laughs> <laughs> the uh, awesome that was real. <laughs> all right. I think we should end it with a favorite book. <sighs> mm hmm. Well, Feels like you want to just last for two hours. So, um, no, you know, favorite books of all time are, I love Harry Potter. Yeah. Uh, Poisonwood Bible. A lot of the Barbara King Solver books I think are great. Mm -hmm. Demon Copperhead that came out last year. Mm -hmm. I am, I know this seems odd, but I am a huge Stephen King junkie. Yeah. Um, I would fangirl for him meeting him the way that most people would for Taylor Swift, which wouldn't say I wouldn't do that also, but I <laughs> uh, love Stephen King. Um, and I'm a big fan of the Thursday Murder Club books right now. Oh. Um, yeah. And I love, love, love historical fiction. So mm -hmm. just about yeah. anything historical fiction you can get me in on. But um, I feel like my Goodreads is probably public. And if anybody wants to see me talk about books, like come hang out with me because I read so <laughs> much. And I just write reviews for no one because I like to have an opinion after I'm done. Those stars mean something. <laughs> I love you write a review, but that's like super helpful. And you know that as an author, people review your book, right? I know. So Actually, as we were talking, I was like, oh crap, I need to like ask some people to review my, so hey, if you read my most recent book, please review it. Cause I was supposed to get <laughs> well, We grab it. So which one is your most recent book? Planet in Christmas. Okay. okay. Yeah. Plant. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right. Uh huh. So what we should jump on, then we can write some reviews. Yeah. Yes, please. I will take that. Now, obviously I'm fine with honest reviews, but I hope you really like it. And I love to hear what people think about that. Um, whether I'm in it, I'm writing it, I'm teaching people it. Like I really like to just expand that community and, um, you know, internet lets us do that. So and that's pretty cool. Yeah. It does a lot of things I don't like, but there's a lot of good for it. <laughs> Why don't you tell us, uh, before we go, where we can watch Hometown Remedy? Yes. The good news about Hometown Remedy is everybody can watch it. Um, you don't have to have Hallmark. You can, you know, uh, it's on Tubi right now, which is free. Mm -hmm. um, and it's going to roll out soon to uh, Freevee, Amazon's platform, and Roku. Um, if you're in Canada, it will be on Super Channel very soon, and it's going to be uh, in a lot of Spanish-speaking countries as well, and then um, might even keep going after that. So it's this has been one of the first rom-coms I've done where everybody I know can actually easily mm. watch it. So um, if you haven't used Tubi, it's super easy. Just type in the name of the movie, and you might have to watch a couple commercials, but mm -hmm that's it. So that's kind of fun to be, some people will be like, Oh, I don't have that channel. And I'm like, it's fine. You can watch me anyway. <laughs> uh -huh. Right? No, the, the to be is actually very easy to use and mm -hmm. we've have used it for multiple things. So, um, yeah, no, we lo love that. It's uh, available everywhere. Mm -hmm. Um, and you can get to right now. You can watch it tonight. You can watch it tonight. You can watch it tonight. And you should. Yes. And you should. And I would love to hear what you think about it. Um, and like I said, it's a beautiful highlight of central Kentucky and the horse country there. And if anybody is in at all that area and hasn't visited Versailles, the like little town, it's just perfect place for a day trip, all the distilleries, et cetera. And yes, I will do more Amish movies. <laughs> <laughs> and then where can we find you on social media? Social media. Uh, I do have a Facebook page, but mostly I'm most active on Instagram. Okay. And that's at G A L A E L F. Gala Elf, like the one I was named after. <laughs> Read Lord of the Rings. <laughs> that's right. Read Lord of the Rings. Um, and then if anybody's interested in any of the acting teaching I do, um, right now I'm by referral only, but I do have a master class that's up on Udemy that people can purchase, which is a comprehensive technique class. So if they're not able to study with me personally one-on-one, -on -one, a lot of people, uh, I think it's actually the number one most popular acting course on there. So um, if anybody's aspiring to come this way, I think it's a great place to start and it has all the stuff that I wished I would have learned a little earlier on. I yeah, love, I love that. that you do that. Yes. Well, thank you so much for being here and thank you everybody for watching. Um, yeah. Yeah, so make this sure you so go fun. Hometown holiday. Yes, it was great to meet you. Lots it was great to meet you guys too. And yeah, hometown remedy. Let me know what you guys think.
We'll do. Thank, Thank you, everybody. Bye, Bye. everyone.